Good afternoon, techs. It's Richard. Today we're working on a 2005 Pontiac G6 with some alternator problems. What we're going to do is we're going to use the All Data program. We're going to look up the repair procedure. It'll show us pictures, step-by-step -step information, and give us a, an, an approximate idea how long it should take to complete this job. After we look at all this, then we'll step out into the shop and actually repair, uh, replace the alternator. So we'll start off with repair. Then we'll enter in our vehicle information. 2005 Pontiac G6. VIN number 8, V63.5. Now we're going to go to the charging system, which is down here at starting and charging. We're going to look at the alternator, which would be under charging system. Here's our alternator. So here it shows us the location of the alternator, and it tells us it's on the firewall side, on the, pa on the passenger side of the engine well. There's a general picture. It shows that it has three mounting bolts, one that goes in from the front and two that are hidden in the back. Now this is important. Those are going to be hidden and you can't even see them. So we scroll down here, it tells us what to take off. Always take off your negative battery cable first before you do any electrical work. We continue with our instructions. It shows the app, gives us our torque values when we're going back together. And then we'll see about how long this job is supposed to take. So it shows 0.5, so it's not a big job. It just we need, we need to make sure that we can get to those rear bolts. They're kind of hidden. All data kind of helped us out here. They, they clued us in that we have two bolts back there. They're going to be kind of tough to get to, but either way, it shouldn't be a big job. So what we'll do now is we'll step out into the shop and uh, get this alternator repaired. This is the car we're going to repair today. We've already scanned it with the Altel scanner, and we know that we have a fault code for the charging system. So the first thing we're going to do is, as always, do a very good look over, do a, a general inspection of the car, see if there's anything really obvious to cause the alternator to go bad. What we found here was inside the alternator, there was actually some foreign debris stuck down in the case. There's some pieces of rubber that look like they may have come off the seal for the hood and they've actually gotten down in there. Well, that's what's caused our problem. So now we're gonna replace this alternator. We're going to start off by unhooking the battery. You always unhook the negative side before you do any kind of electrical work. So we're going to start with that. All right, next is we're going to release the belt tensioner so we can get our serpentine belt off. Some of these can be kind of hard to get to, but this one's not too bad. Well, the interesting thing about this is we're gonna have to pull the front engine mount to get the belt out. It didn't say that, but I looked up the alternator, not the belt. But that's no biggie. We can get, we can do it. Won't take long. Won't take long. Okay, the front engine mount is out of the way. And here's our old belt. The belt itself is in pretty sad shape. You can see it's starting to come apart on the outside. It's got some shiny sparks on it. On the inside, if you flex the belt real hard, you can see where all the cracks in the rib are. There was not much life left in this belt. So we're gonna replace this belt when we put the new alternator on. All right, now that we have our alternator out, we can kind of look it over. Not only did we have foreign debris, there's more of it, as a matter of fact. Uh, the other thing that, that kills these alternators is you see here, it's kind of oily and dirty. That's the other big killer of alternators is you get engine coolant, windshield washer fluid, but mainly oil gets down inside here. On this particular car, the alternator was very high on the engine, but on a lot of these cars, 
it's down at the very bottom. And of course, all engine oil leaks, coolant leaks, all that, they all run down to the bottom. They'll collect down inside here and ruin the windings or cause the rectifier to short out or go bad or, or the bearing to go bad or whatever it might be. But in this particular case, it's foreign debris. So we'll get our new alternator mounted up. And we're gonna change out both our idler pulleys while we're in here, put our new belt on and the job will be done. Two different pulleys on a serpentine system. You have your smooth pulleys. These run on the smooth side of the belt. Then you have your ribbed pulleys that run on the ribbed side of the belt. We're gonna replace both of these because again, they're worn out, cracked, all the coatings coming off of them like this one here. There are bearings inside here that eventually go bad and they'll, they'll make a groaning or a whining noise. So we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna take the safe route and we're gonna replace all this while we're in here. As we've talked about before, you always want to start this stuff by hand. Don't use your battery ratchet or an impact or whatever. Start all this stuff by hand because some of these are not in a very good spot and you don't want to have to deal with a damaged thread hole. All right, our idlers are on. Now it's time to reinstall the alternator. This is a Duralast Gold alternator. Comes with a really nice corrosion resistant finish on it. This is all new, 100% all new parts. It looks very nice. We're going to install this, hook up our electrical connections, and our belt. The job will be done. Now that the alternator's on, our two idler pulleys are on, it's time to replace our belt. And this is where the belt routing picture we took off all data comes in handy. Gives you an, a good road map on how to put this back together. Serpentine belt is on. Now it's time to remake our electrical connections at the alternator, hook the battery back up, then we'll start it, um, check our charging voltage with the Altel Altel scanner, to make sure everything's good to go. All right, everything sounds good. The belt alignment looks good. Always check it once you start it, make sure it's running true, that your idler pulleys aren't wobbling around, they're you know nice and straight. Sounds good. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at our Altel scanner. What we're going to do is we're going to get to the part where we can see battery voltage. And make sure our alternator is working correctly. Right here, we are showing at idle. We're showing 13.9 volts on the scanner. Everything looks good to go. We'll button it up, close the hood, take it for a test drive, and we're done.